Hello crafty friends! Today I want to share with you four fun embroidery projects to try out on your own clothes. My goal is to share with you my knowledge on how to approach embroidering different fabrics, tips and tricks, and four stitches that I find very versatile. The first three patterns are my own and I have included them for free in the description, but hopefully this gives you the inspiration and knowledge to design your own patterns so that you can embroider anything. I've included chapter notes so you can try out whichever project interests you. The materials on the screen are used for most of the projects shown and I highly recommend having them handy. I will list them in the description with links. These materials are optional depending on the project. For example, a stretchy top usually requires a stabilizer. I will list the materials needed in the beginning of each project. Our first design is this adorable black cat and moon. I start by tracing my design onto stick and stitch. I use my iPad to design, but you can also draw your design on paper. Just use a window or any source of light to trace your design onto stick and stitch. Once you are done tracing, you can cut out the design and stick it onto the fabric. I love stick and stitch. You could just draw your design onto the fabric itself, but I think it just makes the project so much neater. I always try to place my design where my hand could easily go back and forth with a needle. For example, a design on the sleeve might be cute, but the sleeve opening is small and makes it very difficult to embroider. Sandwich your fabric between the bottom hoop and the hoop with the screw on the top. Tighten the screw and make sure your fabric is secure and taut. Most threads come with six strands. Cut your thread and separate it into three strands. Go slowly. Straightening out as you go prevents knots from forming. Tie a knot at the end of your thread. Let me show you a quick demo of the first stitch we will use, which is an outline stitch. Bring your needle through the back to the right side of the fabric. Take your needle and push it through the fabric a little bit away from where you started. Your non-dominant hand should be holding the thread so a loop forms and you don't pull the thread all the way through. Come back through the middle with your needle, making sure that the loop is above the needle. Pull all the way and you have your first outline stitch. Keep going until you reach the very end. Once you reach the end, you will take your needle and go all the way through the fabric. To secure the thread, take your needle and go through the second to last stitch. Hold on to the thread with your non-dominant hand so that a loop forms. Put your needle through the loop. And ta-da, you have a knot. I like to secure twice. Another way to secure is to push your needle through the fabric, catching only a little bit of the fabric and making sure it doesn't show up on the other side. You then put your needle through the loop and secure as so. Don't forget to cut your thread. Now you are ready to stitch anything. I used an outline stitch for the entire cat. 
I have skipped filming some stitching because I don't think it's too useful, but let me know in the comments if you think otherwise. Where two curved lines meet can be tricky. To ensure a smooth line and a smooth transition, I like to push my needle all the way through at the end of a curved line. I then come up right next to where I just stitched at the beginning of the next curve. This starts a new outline stitch. Continue your stitching. Once you reach the end, don't forget to secure your project. To embroider the whiskers, I do a straight stitch. A straight stitch is literally bringing your needle through the fabric and back down. We will be using small French knots for the paw print. Push your needle from back of fabric to the front. Place your needle below the thread like so. Wrap the thread around the needle. The more times you wrap the thread around the needle, the bigger the French knot will be. Insert the needle right next to where you came through from. Your non-dominant hand should hold the thread tight at the loop, making sure the tail passes through before releasing the loop. This ensures that your French knots are neat. French knots take some practice, so don't be frustrated if you don't get it the first time. I am only using a single strand of embroidery thread. The bottom part of the paw print, I do two wraps for the French knot. For the top part of the paw print, I do one wrap for the French knot. You can play around with this and see what looks best. done embroidering, release your hoop. Wash off the stick and stitch with water.
cut off a piece of stabilizer a bit bigger than your hoop. Lay it in between the bottom hoop and your fabric. Sandwich it all together with the top hoop and make sure the fabric is taut. With stretchy thin material, you usually need a stabilizer to make sure the material doesn't stretch out your embroidery. Tighten the hoop. I am using white thread and splitting it into three strands. You can use any color thread. The only stitch you will need for this project is an outline stitch. Go back to the outline stitch tutorial if you would like to learn the stitch or need a refresher. You can start your outline stitch from anywhere. I just make sure to outline all the black lines. I like butterflies because you can really do any line pattern you want. Just make sure the left and right side are as symmetrical as possible. Don't forget to secure the thread. Once you are finished, take off the embroidery hoop and remove the stabilizer in the back by tearing it away. Wash away the stick and stitch with water and you are done. Either way, you're with me or not, just know that I'm okay. I wish you the best life, if that's the case. Plus I needed time for myself anyway. Uh -huh. I chose to embroider daisies on my bag, but this would also look super cute on jeans. Feel free to choose any color combination. You can get creative and do different colors for each daisy for a rainbow effect. Using your erasable pen, draw a circle. I used a glue stick to help me create the circle shape. Draw a line dividing the circle in half horizontally. Use a ruler if you need help drawing a straight line. Draw a second line dividing the circle in half vertically. Draw two diagonal lines through the center point to divide the circle into eight quarters. This will create eight petals. Draw a circle to represent the center of the daisy. We will first create the French knot. I usually create the petals first, but having the yellow dot I think will help you for this demo. I wrap two or three times around my needle before pulling through. If you need a slower tutorial, go back to the French knot tutorial in the chapter notes. For the first petal, come through from the back of the fabric as close to the French knot as possible, a little left of the white petal line. Go back down through the fabric next to where you came up from, a little right of the petal line. My non-dominant hand is holding onto the thread to create a loop. Come back up at the tip of the petal line. Make sure your working thread is underneath the loop as you pull your thread all the way through. Now take your needle and go back down right above the loop. This secures the loop in place to create the petal. I then bring the needle back up at the center and basically repeat this seven more times. Continue this until you have eight petals. Secure the thread at the back.
I like to use my needle to make the petals a bit neater. I am drawing where I want my daisies to be with a heat erasable pen. Exactly like in the tutorial, I fill my bag with daisies. My bag is double layered. Because I don't want thread to show on the other side, I am only catching one layer of fabric at a time. Hopefully this isn't too confusing for beginners. If it is, just ignore this. This fabric is a bit harder to embroider on just because it's so thick and awkward, but we made it work. Little did I know this was moments before disaster strike, so let's just enjoy it in all of its beauty right now. Uh, but remember the heat erasable pen? I used my iron to get rid of the ink, but my iron was turned on very high from a different project, and I melted the plastic. Always check your settings before you iron. Let me know if you have any ideas on how to fix this. I was definitely a little bit sad, um, but we have to move on. I'm done with chasing don't waste an energy you can't replace I'm over the pressure of doing things your way When you left that shit was hard But it gave me a fresh start Now that we departed I've already stitched a tiny fox following a pattern from the book. Stitching at the band does take twice as long because the fabric is double layered. I'm going to stitch this elk motif on the pant leg. I recommend stitching it here because it is single layered, but do whatever makes you happy. I am using a dark brown, tan, black, and white threads. You will only need a single strand of thread for each color. I am starting with a dark brown thread and coming through from the back of the fabric. I'm following the colors of the picture in the book. This design only consists of short straight stitches that imitate fur. To straight stitch, simply go through the fabric and back down. I do this until the entire body is covered with fur. I think it's so cool how the simplest embroidery stitch can make such a intricate and whimsical design. I then do scattered straight stitches with white thread. Before finally adding a lighter tan or brown color for more texture. thread to create a French knot for the eyes. Repeat for the baby elk.
Use whatever color thread you would like for the footprints. It is just two straight stitches. I plan on covering these plants with little woodland creatures. Now, wash off the stick and stitch and you are done. some inspiration for your next embroidery project. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Either way, you with me.